So, wir sind pünktlich, wenn wir jetzt beginnen. Very good morning to everybody. We are very proud to welcome you here at the Software Defined Radio Academy. It's the fifth time uh, we are uh, now with the Software Defined Radio Academy active on the ham radio. So, uh, this is Markus Heller. My name is Michael Hartje and we are the staff of the Software Defined Radio Academy. We want to give you first an introduction and an overview of the today eight hours we are planning to, uh, with you. So uh, let us start with the organization and uh, some remarks on privacy, which we should uh, explain to you due to the law. Markus? Well, first of all, first of all, all the talks will be recorded on video. Uh, we have an excellent video team. Uh, they're really fantastic guys, and they've uh, done a lot of effort to uh, to record our talks and also to broadcast it over the internet through our YouTube channel. So, uh, thanks to Torben, Sebastian. Delta Lima 5, Whiskey November, Mark, Delta Oscar 1, Bravo Oscar Lima, and Tim, De Delta Oscar 2, Tim. <laughs> um, that's quite important because uh, of uh, privacy. If you walk around here in the front, you may be on our recording. Uh, please don't walk in the middle because we have our camera, first of all, here in the middle that, uh, that captures here our uh, central screen. Well, for the, for the overall uh, course of the day, we have, um, uh, well, four talks in the morning. Uh, we have a lunch break and we have some more talks in the afternoon. Um, the afternoon will start at uh, 13 hours, around 13 hours, I hope, but it will start with 13 hours because we don't know exactly. We have a star guest, a star guest uh, that's a Nobel Prize laureate, Professor Dr. Joe Taylor, K1JT, who's going to talk to us and give a short uh, address and question and answers uh, round here to us. And um, we don't know exactly when he'll arrive, if he's going to arrive at the point at 13 hours or maybe a little later. So please be patient in that case. Um, if you move in and out, please do it before and after the talks, and please don't walk in and out during the talks, particularly here in the middle, because you will be walking through the camera screen. Well, um, if you have questions, we will always have um, a short uh, question and answers section after each talk, which is about five minutes. Um, please use the microphones. We have a couple of microphones here in, the, here in the room. I will be sharing microphones to you. Please use them because otherwise the answer may be on the recording but not the question, which is important. Okay, we uh, are planning to hold uh, 10 talks from 10 to a, uh, 6. Uh, six o'clock in the evening. Each will last about uh, 40 minutes, including the discussion. Uh, uh, we will uh, expect an overfilled room, so uh, the first row will be for the presenters, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, speakers, uh, and the room capacity is uh, about 180 persons, so uh, please sit down if you can. <laughs> Possibly uh, to follow the talks from outside uh, is available and you can uh, have a look on the um, YouTube channel. You will find uh, everything on there and you can, uh, if you think uh, you have to leave the room for another uh, presentation, you can later on s uh, look on the a video, you will find everything will be recorded. So we expect uh, 
Christian Ensfelder, uh, I'm not quite sure when he will come here, uh, but we expect him and he will uh, uh, tell some greetings uh, from the board of DAC. Why do we need the SDR uh, Academy? Uh, well, the focus is on software-defined radio. Sof uh, SDR means software plus radio. Software conferences for free and open software are well known. Uh, we uh, recommend to have a look on FOSDEM, which is held in Belgium, Brussels. There are a lot of radio conferences uh, for ham radio as well, and we are on one of them. Uh, other conferences are addressed to professionals and to scientists. Ham radio today is still focused on an analog systems, uh, and we need, this is our opinion, uh, we need a digitization of ham radio education who is coming from Germany, he, he knows the discussion in the official media about digitization. Everything should be digitized in the future. <coughs> well, um, next question is what we intended five years ago, uh, why we set up the SDRA. It should be a, an exchange platform between speakers and you, the audience. You're an important part here in the, in the SDRA. Um, it should be application-oriented. It should not so much be theoretical, because theoretical aspects, I mean, therefore, we have scientific conferences where you can discuss the last bit in an algorithm and so on. You can do that here also, of course. Um, but we want it to be a little more application oriented. We wanted to fill the gap between science industry and ham radio because we had the perception that in the past 10, 15, 20 years the gap was widening. Um, the industry and the academia was, were moving forward very, very quickly and our field of amateur radio, we were not catching up as quickly. So there was a definite need for such a, um, a knowledge transfer platform. Um, and we wanted to make a link between the published literature and, and SDR as we use it and the according products we have and the projects we are, we're developing ourselves. Um, what, we want to, what we want to reach is uh, we want to make you from passive listeners or observers into active practitioners of software-defined radio. Software-defined radio is actually a fantastic um, opportunity to, to start to, to become active and to create your own applications, your own devices, um, to build things yourself, which is really fantastic now again. And we want to show you how to make the first steps. We want to, to help you to jump over those virtual walls which are perceived in the beginning when you, when you start to go into it with, well, what is a complex figure? What is an IQ sample? How, how do you calculate with it? What do you do with it? And what can you do with it? And all of those things, those are the questions. You can ask them here. Um, in hall number A1, there is a, going, uh, there is a, lot, of, uh, a lot of, there are a lot of presentations about products. And well, the hall number one, A1, is very busy and it's quite difficult to ask really deep questions there. But you can ask those questions here. Um, what we cannot offer here is a workshop, unfortunately. We're very, very sorry for that. Um, questions also when to do it, how to do it, how big it should be, uh, about laptop support and so on. That's still quite, quite difficult. And we are still trying to do that in the next years. We have it on our, on our plan. We know that there is a demand, but it's... Uh, it's way more complicated than just giving a, a conference and, and presenting speeches. So we're very sorry for that. Which competences uh, do you bring with you to and what do you gain after the SDA? Before you are interested in SDR and in, in innovations in radio technology, ideal 
uh, you have made some own experiments with SDR equipments. Um, you, you know or you use SDR programs for ham radio applications with uh, receiving and transmitting. After the SDRA, you know a lot of more of the technology, better understand the SDR products, <coughs> hopefully, and uh, you will gain a lot of ideas what will be uh, your next step in your own SD, uh, SDR experiments. So let me start with the questionnaire to the audience. Um, so I ask you and I uh, expect for you a sign. Uh, and I will, uh, I will tell or um, estimate how many uh, hands I see up. First question will be, uh, who has used SDR or who is using SDR transmitter or SDR receiver for ham radio application on shortwave? Okay, this is about 50%. Um, who one use it for VHF and UHF? Oh, it's about 20%, thank you. Who one knows or uses FunCube dongle or RTL stick for SDR experiments? Oh, it's about 50%. Who one uh, has, uh, who has uh, assembled or designed SDR systems hardware? Oh, it's about 20%. Uh, who has an USRP, HEC ARF, uh, Lime SDR, Red Pitaya, or Pluto SDR? That's about as, uh, 30 30%. Um, who one uses digital modes and especially not FT8? This means everything else but uh, FT8. Okay, it's about 10%. Uh, who one knows and uses reverse beacon networks, uh, CW skimmers, uh, and uh, whisper or made itself? Uh, it's about 20%. Who one knows and uses or uses GNU radio for SDR experiments. It's about 20%. Uh, um, who one has, uh, who has made uh, SDR experiments on VHF, UHF, not the QO100? Uh, it's about 10%. So, the program today is to gain a little bit more on uh, this knowledge about SDR and we have uh, for satellite systems five lessons including navigation. We have one uh, session about Red Pitaya SDR uh, transmitting and receiving systems. Uh, we will have one talk about electromagnetic interference. Uh, of the environmental uh, area. Uh, the system of the DARC is named ENEMS. I will explain later. Uh, and we will have talks about location and navigation with uh, time difference of arrival, radio systems. Uh, we will have new technologies for SDR modulation. Well, the recent developments of SDR are the QO100. And when you have a look on satellite communication with, uh, via QO100, you may have an own view on it, but our view is that nearly all transmitting and receiving systems use SDR equipment. I haven't heard anybody who had a different, an alternative system. 
The web SDR is a very strong alternative for starting with satellite uh, QO100 when you don't have your own receiver. On shortwave, we saw new transmitting and receiving systems uh, from the ham radio industry. They are all SDR. Maybe you know the key, uh, KX4 from Elcraft, a uh, lot of Yezu transmitting and receiving systems are coming up. Well, what, is, uh, what type of SDR is it what is coming up? It is mainly increasing numbers with direct sampling systems, not SDR in the later stages of a receiver. We will still continue, or we, uh, uh, we observe still uh, a continuation of superhead and uh, intermediate frequency digital signal processing, which is still called SDR. And I will show you, this is not my opinion that it is a good SDR concept. Um, SDR is a key for measurement systems and automated uh, radio uh, systems. Let me show you one overview what is in the past, uh, what happens in the past uh, over the time. We have 1990, 2000 and 2013 plus and you see the digital part is uh, mentioned in red and you see an increasing uh, number of stages from the receiver. Well, this is mainly uh, all the receivers uh, superhand concept, which is very well known uh, during the last century. And uh, you see, it is increasing number of stages. And now we are here uh, after the low uh, noise amplifier in the front after the antenna, we have uh, sometimes no mixer, we have direct sampling for shortwave. Well, for VHF, UHF, we, we need a mixer, but it is really uh, very strong after the uh, first amplifier. Must do water. <coughs> well, we have, um, we have a talk from uh, a DARC a local uh, local club, and that's also very interesting. But among others, uh, which is a good proof that uh, SDR technology is is a fantastic opportunity for self brew, self defined systems, homebrew things. SDR is the choice, the way of choice, to make your own rig. And um, I mentioned the C20 Charlie 25 transmitter. But there are also others. There is the MCHF, there is the uh, OVI-40, which is also from a, a local club from the ARC, which has a touch panel, which has a transmit, certain transmission power between 10 and 100 watts. Um, it covers all parts of the spectrum. Uh, the technology covers all, all modes, so we are very, very versatile with this uh, approach. We have uh, direct sampling and FPGA-based systems, for example, the Red Pitaya, the Charlie 25, um, which has an, an hour, a new core, that's the Red Pitaya with 16-bit. Uh, um, we have the Pi APHG, APH, AP, HPSDR. We have um, all different modes. Well, it's just software. It's just software processing. So implementing new mode is very, very simple compared to to old technology, legacy technology, where you have to define electronics and those those um, those uh, electronic um, platforms can just do exactly the one thing they're designed to do for uh, they're designed to do. Um, well, the modes that are implemented are SSB, CW, of course, digital modes, text modes, whisper, beacon modes. There is also digital voice. There is free DV. It's integrated in the Mac, uh, in the MCHF. It's in the o OVI 40. So this is a very, very versatile approach. Let me make some remarks on the, what we expect in the future from radio in general. In general, we expect the 5G smartphones, 
up to now uh, here in Germany there's a discussion on it uh, and we will expect them in the future. Uh, there is a question still if w will be available the FM radio service, the public service. The antenna based public radio and TV are still available but there is a question mark which I mentioned. Increasing wireless technologies uh, like distant radars are used in uh, uh, traffic uh, equipment. Well, for SDR, we expect powerful FPGA-based SDR ships. The Xilinx Ultra Scale is a very uh, powerful system with a four-core uh, ARM processor in 64-bit technology. Analog devices brought a lot of uh, new devices out. The IQ mixers are up to 16 gigahertz and one of my microwave colleagues is now uh, applic uh, application, uh, made an application uh, with um, uh, master thesis uh, to use it and to find out and maybe next year I will uh, talk about that. <laughs> Uh, it consists of our 10 gigahertz band in ham radio, so it is very inter uh, very interesting uh, device. Radar applications for automotive domain are very improved in the future. Optional future development will be done in uh, cognitive radio, a digital back tunnel uh, for. Uh, for systems uh, who uh, talk about what is the momentary status of the channel. Uh, assistant systems for frequency selections are well known like the DX cluster for ham radio. Uh, we expect FT8 will be integrated in conventional modern radio equipment like PSK in the past and other digital modes. We expect more equipment will, be, uh, will integrate the free DV. An SDR will be the way for home brew rig as we mentioned in the past foils. Future in VHF and up, geostationary uh, satellite QO uh, 100 demonstrate the capabilities what can be expected from the uh, system of a geostationary satellite. Single frequency repeater technology will be still available and will be used. FM still will be used in the future. Simple backward compatibility of this technology is a main argument. New digital modes without the MB chip Improved speech quality and better backward compatibility will be uh, like the uh, 3 dv 2020 which will give us an 8 kilohertz audio bandwidth. So this will be a quality uh, audio. Okay, well, uh, we will see. Uh, Hemnet user entry points are increasing in uh, Germany. And Hemnet-based voice transmission could be an option for the future. We expect the World Radio Conference uh, in October and November 2019, at the end of, our, uh, of this year. Changes in our spectrum is expected. This has some opportunities and some uh, elements uh, we are not uh, very engaged for it. Ham radio organization prepare different proposals for the spectrum uh, in uh, 0 to 70 megahertz. This may be increased for ham radio use. On the other hand, the commercial users prepare proposals which bring the ham radio under pressure. Especially above the uh, above 70 megahertz will be uh, under hard pressure. Uh, the two meter exclusive status in the past will be under very hard pressure from a European state, from France, at this moment. And there's a discussion today 
uh, where it will be discussed what it will be the strategy of ham radio for that. Some countries in Europe reduce ham radio entry levels and well this could be an option for us. Well digital modes that are coming up and that have been coming up in the past year which we have seen now um, as we said, we want to give you an overview of what's been happening in the past. Um, it's FreeDV 2020. That's a digital phone technology with uh, 8 kilohertz audio within 1600 bits per second, which is a fantastic compression rate compared to whatever we used to have in the past. We've seen FT8 as a new protocol in January this year. We've seen the FT8 fox and hound modes. We have seen FT4. Um, we have seen a, the NPR uh, technology being brought up. There is a demo in hall number A1. That's a new kind of packet radio with 500 kilobits in, uh, within a, a 700 kilohertz uh, band segment. And we've seen a technology called VARA. It's an ARQ protocol with different modes. And, uh, um, for example, an 8 kilobit mode in, in 2 kilohertz which is also fantastic, it's a good compression rate. If you want to have some more information about these uh, last mentioned systems, uh, you please have a look at Swiss uh, ham radio uh, stand. They explain you everything you want to know about that. And the demonstration could be seen uh, at the DISC. Well, this is my last foil and I want to uh, show you up. Uh, uh, we are searching a master student for a master thesis which is uh, now uh, sent out together with the company Rode and Schwarz. It uh, is the aim to uh, make a concept and a GNU radio demonstrator for a 70 centimeter data modem with up to one megabit per second within uh, 200 kilohertz. It will be an OFDMA uh, system. Uh, you know the uh, new packet radio project which we mentioned on the last foil uh, has a, a very broad uh, bandwidth needed for high um, transfer rate and this is too much for our momentary license. Uh, there are two channels in the 70 centimeter band in Germany reserved about 200 kilohertz bandwidth and this should be used with these uh, new uh, system. If you are interested or even the people outside if you are interested give us a call make an email to us uh, and if you like to get uh, some more information, you'll find here some papers which we put on the wall and you can read or ask us uh, uh, during uh, the interrupts of uh, the talks. So this is my last idea at the moment. Uh, I wonder if uh, the next speaker, Alex, uh, is in the audience. He is. Oh, this is nice. Thank you. So, are there any questions? This is not. So, we are good in time. We have a lit little bit more. Uh, One question. One yeah, question. okay. SM0HRP, I heard you said that the new Superhead SDR HF concept is not SDR. Why is that? They have a fantastic blocking dynamic range. Yeah, that's right. Please explain. Uh, well, uh, I can go back to the faults that everybody knows what uh, we are talking about. This is this. And we see uh, the very old one. We had a, uh, we had a very small uh, processing speed for the digital system. And this was the first attempt, and it is called SDR. It is called, it's just a name, and of course, it is for 
catching everybody who wants the innovation of SDR. But it is not an SDR, an SDR is this. This is an SDR in total. Everything is done in digital. The mixers, starting, filters, and of course maybe this is not needed since you are mixing down to the direct sampling area. Yeah? And though this is my interpretation of the word SDR, uh, an SDR is this element, the lowest in the new technology. And uh, the industry mentioned since maybe uh, 1990 uh, that the first idea is an SDR. Do you understand? Yes, but, but could, could you comment why, why isn't SDR good enough? They need support from the super hat in the beginning. Well, it is, it is good enough, but it is not SDRs. You have a lot of analog systems inside, and the gain of SDR is that you are doing everything in digital. Maybe an FPGA, but it is done in digital uh, system uh, when you look at the lowest bar. Yeah? And the analog systems are okay. They could be used a hundred years. But the block and dynamic range is bigger. It's uh, 10 dB higher uh, with this uh, sub. SDR. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, it depends on the first um, uh, on, the, on the first analogical converter. Yeah. If you uh, and we expect an increasing number of dynamic ranges for the analog digital converters. Think of your first audio card from your ham radio rig. The first audio card has about eight or sixteen bit. And today, for radio application, nobody uses 16-bit uh, audio cats. They have uh, 24 bits. So, so, when, so when do you think SDR will take back the direct and throw away the super hat? Um, I think it will not uh, throw. B uh, it will not throw out the system, as. Uh, there, are, uh, there are some very cheap uh, new radio rig made, uh, which are uh, nearly everything is analog. Maybe you know the Blix, B-L-I-X. It's an Indian system, very cheap, and it is a great attractive uh, for uh, starting new hams because of uh, the price. And you know in the uh, liberated market, uh, everything is uh, running by the price. So we can't expect any time when it will be throwing out and ending this production. It will be in future as well, maybe. But, but the, the K, um, K5, Will not will have a new ADC and no super head then. The okay. K5. Yeah, yeah. The the, the KX3 is a super head system like this one. Yeah. And you know, well, the KX3 is a concept of 2000 and more. Yeah. It's not exactly. You see, it's very roughly estimated here in 10 year steps. Okay. Are there more questions or discussions, remarks? This is not the... Ah, yeah, there's one. Okay, please take the microphone. Uh, yes, um, well, you mentioned a few new parts which actually ar arrived, but also I saw uh, you mentioned one um, IQ mixer from analog devices, but also analog devices made an uh, ADC which runs at a little bit over 10 gigasamples per second. That should be more than enough for most uh, ham radio bands. Um, so, mm. uh, okay, I, I let it. So, so uh, again, again, please. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, there was uh, um, about if you really want to be very pure about uh, doing everything digital, uh, there was also a new part uh, being released last year by Analog Devices, doing uh, no less than 10 gigasamples per second at 
uh, well, more than 10 bits. Uh, so, well, that should be more than enough to uh, uh, do everything in software. Well, maybe not software because uh, it produces uh, so many uh, gigabits per second that it's almost impossible to do it in software. You really need yeah, that's FPGA right. hardware. You, you need an <laughs> FPGA as well as uh, you have a down mixer. This uh, mentioned analog digital uh, um, analog devices system is uh, a down mixer with IQ. But it is very interesting for ham radio applications since we have the 10 gigahertz band included. This is my idea to bring this. And next year I will tell a little bit about this master thesis. Okay. Okay. Are there more questions?